Battle Showdown Saturday in college football begins today under the sun of Miami. Three teams all undefeated, all locked in a fight for the coveted two spots in the bowl championship equation. Three teams, two positions. By tomorrow, one team left out in the cold. UCLA quarterback Cade McNown is the poster boy for a team just one win away for their finest season ever. Yet even that's not enough for this determined group of rules. With one of the nation's toughest schedules, they've been taken to the brink, but they've never broken. The kind of unforgettable season where Hollywood heroes are made. The winds and rain of Hurricane George postponed this game back in September. More than two months later, they take the field with the national spotlight all to themselves. This time, there's a storm brewing of a different sort. Let's go, let's go, let's go. An angry team of hurricanes still stinging from humiliation last week. And an ideal opportunity for complete restitution. It's 10-0 UCLA taking on Miami from the Orange Bowl. Hi, everybody. Ron Franklin. It is a bonus Saturday of college football here on ESPN. And personally, the thing that pleases me most is after this weekend, we will have closure on the, the BCS for this year. It has been frustrating. It also has been complicated to a point where fans and coaches and players really have not totally understood what it would take to get to the big event. But we all know what the scenarios are. This time tomorrow, we still could have three teams that are undefeated. And of course, only two can go to Tempe to play for the championship. Here in this ball game, supposedly, if UCLA wins, they are going to be in the championship game. But nothing is certain in this year of college football. So it's the Bruins of UCLA and the Miami Hurricanes coming up. Well, the Hurricane may have postponed the first one scheduled here in Miami, but what a magnificent day this afternoon as you look at the Orange Bowl from high in the sky. Number three, the Bruins of UCLA taking on the Hurricanes of Miami. And there's the guy, Cade McNown. The spotlight is always on the left hand and for good reason he is truly outstanding when you look at those numbers but Mike Gottfried I also would suggest to you when you look at their game footage and you see this team in person the supporting cast ain't too bad either no it's not Ron and Kate McNown's had a great year and his number one target is Danny Farmer a former walk on the wide receiver who's averaging 99.7 pass receiving yards Ron he's had great jumping ability you put the ball up for grabs he's going to come down with it let me ask you a couple of questions. First of all, for UCLA, they are 55th in the nation in scoring defense. Can you make it to the championship game, and can you win a championship 55th in scoring defense, Mike? Well, ordinarily, I'd say no, but this defense comes up with big plays at big times. They've caused 33 turnovers, 27 fumbles, and they've recovered 21. So this is a defense that makes plays at the opportune time. On the other side of the field, Miami realistically they got embarrassed last week up at Syracuse at the Carrier Dome can they realistically have a shot here this afternoon I think they can Ron but it depends on which team shows up the one that got embarrassed last week or the one that got beat by Florida State by 12 points if they run the football with Edger and James and they control the football and keep the defense on the other side uh, or keep the offense on the other side off the field they can do well the other matchup is the front four of Miami especially Derek Ham versus Chris Harris the big tackle for UCLA they've got to use their quickness and they've got to be able to slow down the run and put pressure on Cade McNown Butch Davis the head coach of the Miami Hurricanes fourth season here he was an assistant coach from 1984 through 1988 before taking over Miami won the toss and they defer so UCLA as you look at Bob Toledo boy 20 straight wins first 13 games he was five and eight and of course last year they dropped their first couple and they haven't looked back since they are trying to accomplish something that has never been accomplished at UCLA and that is go 11 and 0 80 degrees humidity 69 percent Chamber of Commerce kind of day you can see the wind is gusting out of the south at about 15 miles an hour Rocks is back deep and keep an eye on number 33 because he is a heart and game breaker. Kick is going to go three yards deep and they will not return it. Let's check it on the sideline with Adrian Karsten. Adrian? Ron, thanks very much. You know, the memory of last week's loss to Syracuse, the worst for the Hurricanes since 1940, honestly still weighs very heavy on the minds of the Hurricane defensive unit. 
by their own admission. They have not yet put that game behind them, and that's why the first three defensive series for Miami are going to be very key. By then, we're going to know what they're made of and how well they're going to play. They need to keep um, uh, UCLA from long, sustained drives and help out the offense by field position. To use Bill Miller's words, the defense coordinator, I am scared to death. Ron. Well, that's what this team from UCLA can do to you. They go with a draw play on first down, and Jermaine Lewis will take it for very short yardage on the left side. So it gives us an opportunity to look at the Home Depot starting lineups for UCLA and offense. McNown, Jermaine Lewis, who just carried, and the fullback is Darrell Price. The receivers, I think they're really good ones, particularly Farmer. We'll see a lot of him today. Up front with the offensive line, it all starts with the big guy, Ferris, over on the left side. He is 6'9", 315, a junior out of Mission Viejo, California. Running plays, going to go for four, maybe five yards straight up the middle. It's Dan Morgan, number 44, a sophomore out of Coral Springs, California, who will make the tackle. Here's the defense for the Bruins. The down, the down four for Miami is Ham Lewis Sweeney at Hip City. A big game out of Ham today. Dan Morgan, who just made the tackle, with Shevin Marshall, who starts in the place of Nate Webster today, and Michael Smith. And in the secondary, it is Nick Ward replacing Leonard Myers, Fitzgerald, Al Blades, and Edward Reed. Third down. Line to make is the 30. Line to make on third down is the 25 of Miami. McNown for the shotgun. Great protection. And that's who they go after, and it is incomplete. Can't hold on. Actually, Marquise Fitzgerald was over on that side, that play. Yeah, Brian Poley Dixon tried to use his height with the uh, out route. Just couldn't hold on to the pass. This is going to be a field goal attempt by Saylor of 50 yards as the ball is placed down about a foot shy of the 40-yard line. His longest is 47, and he's kicking into a stiff breeze, and he's going to pooch kick it. Oh, good, good call right here by Bob Toledo. That thing is going to go dead inside the five-yard line. So Miami gets the stop, but they also are going to have the shadow of their goalpost at their back as they open their first offensive series. Let's take a break. No score from the Orange Bowl. Cade McNown on the sideline talking with Alan Borges, the offensive coordinator, and they discuss what they are going to attempt in their second offensive series. Nice job by Bob Toledo, Ron, on, on punting the football like he did because Miami forced him to try to block the field goal and no one was back. Edron James. Still on his feet. That's a good tough run out to close to the nine yard line. And uh, that gives us an opportunity to look at the starters for the Hurricanes. Coming to the quarterback, Nick Williams is the fullback, and Edwin James, who we just saw. You'll see James catch the ball a lot today as well. The receivers, Moss and King on the outside, and Franks, the tight end. Also, we'll see a lot of Fulcher. And up front with the offensive line, Richard Mercier, probably the best of the offensive linemen, the youngster out of Quebec plays it left guard not much up the middle Michael Webb the nose guard is there to make the stop on the play and uh, defensively for UCLA this is the way it's going to be the down three Coleman Michael Webb who just made the stop and Pete Holland and the linebackers Paul, Nice, White, Ian Badejo on the sideline right now. And as we said, Aziz is in the game for him. Anderson and Jason Bell at the corners. Jason Stevens only a freshman. Larry Atkins is the quarterback in that secondary. Number 35, youngster out of Venice, California. Cunnington with his first pass. Gets it out to his fullback, Williams. And Williams runs over the tackler and crosses the 20 to the 22. Good for 13 yards. Ron, Miami gave a slot formation, two receivers to the top of the screen. And on the back side, they caught UCLA in a coverage uh, a problem here because they brought Nick Williams out of the backfield. Now watch, Nick Williams is going to come out of the backfield. No one's going to pick him up because the linebacker is going to run with the tight end. Nick Williams filters out of the backfield, gets bumped. You see no one over there. So again, good, good play call by Butch Davis. 
It's Fulcher, the tight end that they send in motion. Zings the pass. He's got him at the 40. Andre King, and he just spun Marquise Anderson completely around. 17 yards in the pass play. Well, that's the 21st reception by Andre King. He's only had one touchdown, but Marquise Anderson is going to lose his footing and slip down. You see the pressure on Scott Covington. Here's Andre King working against Anderson. Anderson slips a little bit. Can't come back, and uh, Andre King does come back and makes the play. Quick count, a little counter trade. Penetration by UCLA and James. Well, he's fortunate to pick up three yards in the play. That was a nice job by him because UCLA immediately had penetration into the backfield. That's the kind of back Edron James is. He gets, when you talk to Larry Coker, the offensive coordinator, he says he gets better the more carries he gets, which is true of most backs. And Edron James is 220. I also would suggest to you that this is the eighth play of the drive, but if Miami were able to take this down and score, then as far as confidence on both sides of the football for the Hurricane, that would be huge. Okay. Back into the boundary again. Edron James keeps his balance and fights his way to the 45. It'll be third down, about two and a half. Jason Stevens is here to tackle him. And this drive started inside the five-yard line, a key pass play by Scott Covington. Otherwise, Edron James has been the workhorse in this first drive. Two tight ends, Daniel Franks and Mandrell Fulcher in the ball game for Butch Davis and the Miami Hurricanes and he knows how important this opening drive is as well as you see the clock go under six minutes to play first quarter. Edwin James behind the block of Fulcher has five has ten he's loose gets a block downfield and he will score 45 yards. name as he threw the paving block on the outside and also Andre King. Yeah Andre King did a nice job downfield and that caused the touchdown because there was no defensive back to make the play. Crossland with the extra point and he hits it. Folks that is a 96 yard drive by the Miami Hurricanes to open this football game. As you look at it one more time we go to break. It is Miami 7 and the UCLA Bruins nothing. We'll be right back. 7 to nothing, Miami and I want to show you an interested party or group watching out in Tucson Arizona. They're at the house of Yusef Scott. These are members of the Arizona Wildcats. Paul Shields is next to him. Trunk candidate and then Keith Smith and obviously they would not be pleased with that opening drive that they just saw because they want to see the Bruins win. That group of fellows deservedly so would like to go to the Rose Bowl to take on the Wisconsin Badgers. Believe me there's a lot of interested parties all over the country in this ball game. Ron one one thing I want to mention Brendan I am Badaggio when he got hurt that was the side that they hit him on with the touchdown. Seavers will kick it off. Rocks and Jermaine Lewis back deep. And again with the aid of the wind long kick but it's going to stay in the field of play this time. This is Rock. Like I told you he's a game and heartbreaker but here comes a deep flag downfield. He's going to take it all the way down inside the 30 yard line but the flag is back at the Miami 31 yard line. During the return holding against the return team. 10 yards assessed in the spot of the foul will be first and 10. Ron, they've, they've been used to this. They've been behind a lot during this season, and they have reacted uh, very, very well, and they come back and score. It's a big drive for them, but uh, there's a lot of football to be played yet in this ball game. Oh, I, I don't think anybody's mailing it in. <laughs> no. 5.24 left, opening quarter. Keith Brown, number one, comes in for the first time at tailback. He's a junior out of Phoenix. 
Pitch comes to him. Got blockers in front. And a nice pursuit and tackle at the 22 by Nick Ward. Boy. Now that is surprising. I thought that would be a much higher scoring football game. Well, I think there's a quarterback injury for the Air Force and, uh, in that ball game. And BYU's pretty good defensive football Same team. Same thing that happened to uh, Fisher DeBerry last yeah. year just before we had him in the Las Vegas Bowl. Play action. Going to go long. And wide open is Farmer. And he is going to take it the distance. Danny Farmer, the junior from Los Angeles, 77 yards. And just like that, there is a hush. And look in Tucson, Arizona. Now, Ron, that's what I was talking about. This is an explosive offensive football team that's, they don't matter what the score is. They, they hit big plays. And Danny Farmer, there was a bust in the coverage. Nick Ward and Al Blades, number seven and three, uh, come together on this bootleg right here and just there's a slip right here by Nick Ward and that opens up Danny Farmer and this pretty good speed 465 to get in the end zone I still think he's faster than that Mike he is a beautiful receiver though I could tell you that that's Sailor with the extra point and uh, boy it has gone down a few decibel levels here at the Orange Bowl 433 left in the opening quarter Farmer 77 yards we're tied our score now tied at seven and there's a good look at farmer what an interesting story he is a volleyball player as mike said he's a walk-on and he's got another year and you know the toughest thing in volleyball is you got to have just perfect timing as far as spiking the, the ball but he's perfect in timing jumps i can tell you that davenport in the end zone is going to return it. Runs into his own man at the 23. Coming to deep drop, and he swings it out to James. Breaks the first tackle. And is going to have another Miami first down. Tony White came up to make the stop, and it's Marquise Anderson who hit him and did not make the open field grab. Again, that shows you his strength. Uh, he carried the ball coming into this football game 203 times uh, for 14 touchdowns. Scott Covington alertly comes off to Edron James. There's the missed tackle by Marquise Anderson, and the power running of Edron James finally brought down by Tony White. Tied at seven if you're just now joining us. Just under two minutes to play in the opening half. Counter Trey and it's James and oh my goodness. That is a nice job by Robert Thomas. If he doesn't stop him, he may have been headed for six again. You talk about a workhorse in the first quarter. Now, Edron, J or Edron James is the workhorse. I mean, he is carrying the football and uh, power running against this UCLA defense, catching the ball out of the backfield. And Mike, look where they continue to go to the side of the field where Ian Badejo would be playing. Yeah, there's no doubt. Uh, you lose something when you lose one of your two seniors on defense. James nine carries 71 yards for him as Davenport comes in a tailback gets the handoff and a fresh set of legs going to take it inside the 30 yard line and he is very close to another first down. Ian Badejo looks on from the sideline. Thomas with his second tackle. Also Tony White was there to help out. Well you can <laughs> Etrin James on the bench, well deserved. He's breathing hard. And I'll tell you, the other player that's doing well for Miami is Scott Covington. Uh, the quarterback's off to a good start. Came into this football game with 16 touchdown passes and eight interceptions, and he's playing very well here in the first quarter, making good decisions. Six of six, 70 yards for Scott Covington. Going to throw again. Got incomplete. This time it's Andre King, and he breaks the tackle. King knocked out of bounds inside the five. First and goal, Hurricane. Another missed tackle. Marquise Anderson. Yeah, Marquise Anderson's having a chance to at least make the tackle. Number seven is going to come up, at least make the tackle, and start to change again. But again, another missed tackle on Andre King. Just came up and uh, poor angle pursued Andre King, just went right around him. So Marquise Anderson having a tough go of it on this drive right here. First down Miami, the ball is just inside the five. Ninth play of the drive. Straight ahead is Davenport, he may have one. 
And Ian Badaggio is back in the football game, and he makes the first play coming off the bench and makes that play on Najee Davenport from the backside. Frank, let me say this about Scott Covington. He is from Laguna Niguel, California. He knows a lot of these UCLA players. He either played against them or knew of them when he was in high school out there. And his dad is in for the football game. Got to visit with him on Thursday afternoon at practice. Quick pass. Got it in the end zone for the touchdown. Mosier. There was no one out there, Ron. No one covered him at all. No adjustment by UCLA. They didn't even see him lined up on the outside. Aaron Moser, number 26, standing out here all by himself. Air right here. Nobody on him. You don't get any easier than that. Nick Aliotti looking on. Ten seconds left in his opening quarter, and it has been interesting indeed. Miami strikes back. Hurricanes 14 and UCLA 7. At UCLA. He is a load. You got to make sure that you make a sure tackle on him, or he'll be off and running on every return. Al Blades in the tackle. That is the end of the first quarter. Miami 14, UCLA 7. Right back. A lot of football to play. 14 to 7. The Hurricanes on top. But one thing that I know Bob Toledo is aware of: that when you come into this house. These are the kind of things that can happen to you. Here are win streaks ended by Miami. You look at those numbers. Notre Dame in 89, Nebraska in 84, Oklahoma in 88, Florida State twice, 91 and also 86. The tackle leaders at the end of the first quarter, Ward for Miami with four, and White for UCLA with four. There's Farmer. Nice job this time by Nick Warden. You can see the difference in size between those two guys. Let's check it again with Adrian Karsten. Adrian? Ron, something else to consider. I've seen guys behind the UCLA bench here be late into special teams, not getting the right call out on defense. I think Mike makes a very good point here. Consider a couple of things. Four and a half, five hour flight across the country yesterday. They could have made the trip on Thursday. Also, they've had two weeks off, and none of these players have ever been in the stadium before. Maybe a couple elements adding to the lethargy here by UCLA. Deshaun Foster. He's going to have the first down and take it out close to the 40 yard line. And you know, guys, I think all of what we are saying is true, but I think it'll take another big run by him or Danny Foster to get behind the secondary, and I think they'll be just as pumped. Yeah, but they have been. When you have such a lack of focus that you let a receiver break the huddle and don't go out to cover him. No. Well, then you come right back with a delay of game penalty. Those are signs, again, that you, you see. But I'm like you. This is a quick strike offensive football team. A lot of missed tackles uh -huh. here in the first uh, quarter by UCLA. They set the screen back into the short side. Jermaine Lewis and hang on. Lewis, 35 at the 30, and it's going to be caught from behind by Michael Smith. Boy, I tell you, you talk about a screen pass that's blocked very, very well. Andy Myers, Sean Stewart, the center, Danny Farmer downfield, and then he pulled off just when it could be a, a block in the back. Personal foul, face mask against Miami. So add more yardage on to this one. And Ron, Cade McNown makes this play because he drops sets and then dumps the football. Now you see the block. And now watch Danny Farmer, 87, pulls off of the block on Edward Reed just in time. 
And now with this penalty, that's going to take it inside the 10 to the 8. It is first and goal, UCLA. And just like that, they're in position to tie this ball game up again. And that's two screen passes early in this ball game. Again, trying to slow down the pass rush of Miami's front four. Miami's front four is notorious for roaring up the football field. Look at McNown, 153 yards already. A mishandled snap. Holly Dixon in motion. Wings the pass. Oh, my goodness. Doe Bravac makes the catch, and then Dan Morgan just really tattooed him. Well, Dan Morgan, as a true freshman last year, led Miami in tackles with 105. He's second in the tackles this year with 131. He just sat in the middle on zone coverage. Eyes up the receiver. DeBrovic coming across the middle and makes the hit. Third down. McNown pressure coming again from Ham. And gets it away. Caught for the touchdown, Paulie Dixon. Ron, I'm going to tell you something. Derek Ham is really upset. He felt he was being held by Chris Ferris, and I agree with him. He could not make a play on Cade McNown because he couldn't get Chris Ferris's hands off of him. Cade McNown bought time because Derek Ham was held up. Sailor to attempt the extra point, trying to tie this one up at 11.54, left in the second quarter. You got a track meet. <laughs> well, it's not unusual for the, uh, for the UCLA Bruins. Let's take a timeout. The touchdown pass to Paulie Dixon as he falls to the ground. We'll be right back. Well, a good look at the uh, resting Miami defense. You know, when you teach that from Pee Wee football on, on, help your quarterback and keep moving. And boy, that's a great example yeah. of it right there. Don't count your money. You just keep running. That kick completely out of the end zone by Sailor. Daryl Jones and Aaron Moser in at wide receiver. They're at the top of the screen for Miami. But it's James in the running play. A little stutter step, and he'll go across midfield to the 48. Tony White is hanging on to him. Adrian Karsten. UCLA bench tells me, Ron, that to bring Ian Badejo back so early was premature. Obviously, they've got another game to play, no matter where it is and when it is. They'd be risking permanent damage now to him. After they took the wrap off, after they took the hardware, the metal brace off of that knee, it is a sprain, but they don't want to risk anything further. So, unless there's something miraculous at halftime, he's done. And he, he made a play. When he came right back on the field, he made a tackle. UCLA 14, Miami 14. Under 10 minutes to play in the opening half. Third down. Right up in the middle, got his man. That's Santana Moss. And it will be enough for the Miami first down at the 30-yard line. Stevens again defensively. 12 yards in the pass play. And you know Scott Covington, being from California, uh, wants this ball game in the worst way. In 95, Ron, he sent a letter to Butch Davis asking for a release. Butch Davis denied it, uh, er, denied his request. He stayed with the program and now the starting quarterback in his senior season. Well, his dad was here for the hurricane game as well. I said, did you get him out? And he said, just barely. He had to go north and then west. UCLA jumping around on defense on the first down play. James gets by one tackler, gets by a second, and he goes out of bounds around the 10-yard line. That is a gain of almost 10 more. Ron, so many missed tackles by UCLA. Again, uh, talking about lethargic on defense here. Tony White arm tackle and Edron James, and you're not going to arm tackle him. 6'1", 220 pounds. He's a powerful runner. There's a missed, the missed tackle, the arm tackle by Tony White. Now he's in the secondary. By the way, the Miami record for the most rushes in a game is Otis Anderson, 39 against Miami, or against Florida in 1978. He's in trouble. Well, he's James already got 16 today. And you see his season average and what he already has today. First and goal, Miami. Blitz 
right up the middle, but they pick it up. Lob to the end zone, and too far for Santana Moss. That would have been a tough catch where the sun is. And Ron, you talked about it in the open. You know, whether a defense that is porous as this defense can win a national championship, and and the answer is they they've got to cause turnovers, and they yeah. haven't been able to cause any against Miami's offense to this point. And they have been just unbelievably good at causing turnovers and, and picking up fumbles. And I think Edron James has forced UCLA's defense not to blitz as much. James waits for the block at the five and he'll score. <laughs> Big number 62, Richard Mercier, the left guard. Out of Montreal, Quebec, leads the way and watch his block. Yeah, he pulls Ron and he just gets right in front of Edron James and leads him right in the end zone. He gets a helmet wow, that is on a good Deval point. Hicks, number 24. Extra point by Crossland and he's good. So let's take a break. Seven minutes even left in the first half. And if you just joined us, 21-14 Kings. Well, you take a look at the uh, UCLA bench. They're down by seven. I am Badejo watching without his shoulder pads on. And in case you've joined us late, we'll reiterate that uh, he had an injury to his leg back in the first quarter. They took him out, put him back in for a couple of plays. And he had to go right back out. Three possessions, three touchdowns for Miami. Sabres to kick it off for Miami. Now he's kicking into the wind. And he pooches this one. Caught and hit immediately at the 23-yard line is Brian Fletcher. Pam back in the ball game at right defensive end. They fake the pitch, and here's the throw back to the tight end. And Grieve is going to take it to the 45-yard line. And I think that's enough for the first down. Cade McNown and Bob Toledo, they use all their weapons. Uh, a lot of tight ends in this attack. 11 out of 15. 11 out of 14. 179 and 128. Two touchdowns for McNown and one for Covington. Both quarterbacks have been very, very good today. Lindy in motion. They go with the running play and breaking it outside is Keith Brown as he's going to be tackled at the fifth at the 50 yard line and Dan Morgan is there to stop him. Now we haven't seen Deshaun Foster in a while. No. And uh, Keith Brown and again Bob Toledo says I like to roll those tailbacks in by committee and uh, see if somebody can get hot but there's no doubt Deshaun Foster is the best big play uh, runner of those three tailbacks. Michael Smith comes out of the ball game from strong linebacker as Miami rolls in the extra defensive back. McNown under pressure, hit from behind, and he gets it away to Grieve. And the big tight end is rumbling inside the 30 and is knocked down at the 24. And I'll tell you what, he did the knocking down. Oh, my goodness, what a run. And Leonard Myers, who had just come back in the ball game, could not get out of his tracks. No, and Leonard Myers, we were questionable whether he would play in this football game. Uh, is now in the ball game, but Kate McNown does so much with his faking ability, sets everything up, and then his mobility to get out of that pass rush and hit the ball to Mike Grebe. Look at this hit right here, Mike. Grebe is 250, and I mean he hit Myers and turned him from pointing toward Tallahassee to pointing toward the Keys. Well, it is first and goal, Michael. The ball is down at the 10-yard line. Brown again at the five, puts a head down, running tough to the two. Dan Morgan saved the touchdown. This is great offensive football. I mean, it's just up and down the field. I'm not so sure it's as great offense as the defenses are not able to stop anybody. One of the things that we need to keep an eye on in the second half is when it comes to numbers, this man right here has more weapons as far as experienced soldiers than does Butch Davis. There's and, no question about and, that. And how Edron James holds up. Yeah. Second and goal. Brown 
Oh, my goodness, does he get hit at the two? I thought he was going in for the touchdown, and Chris Campbell, number 48, came out of nowhere to hit him head high and stop him. Also, Michael Burrow at the bottom of that step. And after Cade McNown gave that football off to Keith Brown, he came out on the outside. You see, nobody checks him. So eventually, upstairs in the press box, the coaches are going to say, in that situation again, you know, fake that football and roll Cade McNown out. Third down and goal. Twelfth play of the drive for UCLA. They go option, and he pitches it back, and Brown bobbles it and has to recover it. That's a smart play, though. Boy, that ball could have been picked up and returned, so Brown did everything he could, and that is just gather it in and go to the turf. If he would have been able to handle that pitch right away, he scores because Cade McNown takes it right there to Ham, pitches the ball, but you can see Keith Brown just couldn't bring it in. You saw who hit quarterback Cade McNown again. Derek Ham is right there on it. Good first half. Sailor with the attempt, 22 yards. And he nails it. It is halftime here at the Orange Bowl in Miami, Florida, with our score. Surprisingly, the Miami Hurricanes, 21, and the third ranked Bruins of UCLA, 17. Now, with the college football and halftime report, let's rejoin Larry Beal. Well, as we prepare to start the third quarter, it's uh, Miami 21 to 17 in a shocking, uh, shocking situation as far as the first half is concerned. Mike Gottfried, I have to wonder if Butch Davis is questioning himself over his strategy at the end of the first half. Ron, let's say, first of all, marvelous play calling by Miami in the first half. And I know they were concerned about it, maybe forcing a turnover, giving the ball to UCLA, but they had 124 on the clock. They ran five plays. They gained 52 yards. Uh, I think they did make a mistake, and it may come back to haunt them. Well, as far as that first half is concerned, one of the things that they had to be thinking about is this has been a very opportunistic defense. But here's how the big play can happen quickly with UCLA. A farmer catches the big touchdown pass, and Cade McNown rolls to his left side, hits Pulley Dixon in the end zone. Alert play by the wide receiver, Stan Alive. And then they came back to answer Miami's third score and kind of fumbled the uh, pitch on the option. Keith Brown, they didn't get in. They forced a field goal. Miami very methodical in the first half. UCLA, quick strike. Interesting. Butch Davis, you see him there rolling his finger saying, let's get this thing going. He's having fun. He has to be. Well, I don't know how much fun he's having right now, but <laughs> they came out the second half with a little more fire in them when they came out of the locker room. This kick, Davenport takes it about five yards deep and is instructed, nope, go down on one knee. Not going to return this one. First half stats in this ball game. Well, it indicates about exactly what you might expect from two teams that were just not stopped by the other defense. Yeah, 177 yards rushing for Miami in total yards. Miami getting the edge with 305. You mentioned it. UCLA has not forced a turnover on Miami yet. And how well will Etrin James run in the second half as he keeps piling up carry after carry? That's going to be the key. going to go up on first down and nobody close Andre King was uh, the guy who was the intended receivers check with Adrian Karsten on the topic conversation in the UCLA locker room at halftime was basically missed tackles basically because of the loss of Brendan Imandagio with the loss of him and that knee injury they lose a man who can really close on a guy like James for Miami both on the pass and the run so here's what they're going to do scrap the defensive game plan they came in with go back to the original run Ron they had back in September much more simplified not as much stunting because they feel they may be stunting themselves right out of position well, that's a great point we'll see how quickly it works seven of seven today on third down conversions here comes the blitz right up the middle they're not going to get this one and that is Wuma who comes up to make the tackle Ramuji Wuma junior out of Covina California and I mentioned again you saw it uh, first when they came out of the locker room they came out with a a little more zip and that, that they wanted to play this second UCLA, half yeah. UCLA and, and now Adrian Carson's talking about adjustments and the blitz here and the sacking of Covington and they're gonna get this in good field position as Rock gets the punt goes inside the 40 now inside the 35 and UCLA is gonna open the second half with a very good field position 36 yards and the punt is all a 10 on the return 
Yep, Deshaun Foster opens the second half, lined up seven yards behind his quarterback, and he gets the handoff. There he goes up the middle, has five, cuts it to the outside, 10, 15, 20. He is loose and out of bounds, and it's going to be first and goal, UCLA, inside the 10, just like that. 26 yards by the freshman. And Bob Toledo talked about the vision of Deshaun Foster and reading a hole, and as he started to the right side, then he cut back to the left side, watched his blocking set up and then he shows good speed getting around the corner finally Marquise Fitzgerald forced him out of bounds power running back so we have not played one minute in the second half three and out for Miami and all of a sudden UCLA with a first and goal knocking on the door down got farmer right over the middle touchdown UCLA Danny Farmer, you could have gone onto the field and said, hey, guys, you better watch your 87. <laughs> that's who it was, and that's who scored. Chris Ferris with a nice job of holding out Derek Ham. Did a nice job blocking the, the fine defensive end, the sack leader, second nationally for Miami. No pressure on Cade McNown. Chris Saylor to attempt the extra point. He's got it. And I mean, without playing two minutes in the second half, the Bruins go back on top, 24 to 21. We'll take a break as Farmer has another touchdown reception. His father played in the National Football League, and his uncle played in the National Football League. And he has played on two national championship volleyball teams at UCLA. His name is Danny Farmer, and he is as complete as any receiver in America in college football, and he has proven his worth here this afternoon. Ron, he led uh, UCLA as a freshman in receiving, so it shows you the kind of career he's had. Mike, if it's a boxing match, that's a real gut shot right there that Miami took. UCLA's defense playing a little bit more aggressive in this early third quarter. Well, Adrian said that, you know, the coaches lectured them at halftime, talking about missed tackles, and we talked about it. Uh, and they're tightening up on the receivers, Ron. They're not giving them those little outs, so they may have to turn this into a fade, deep route. See the pressure coming up the middle, gets his pass, and that one is way overthrown. And for some reason, now Hall was putting pressure on, but Covington has not thrown a good pass in the second half. Well, again, I, I go back to UCLA, pressuring the receivers a little bit more being up, to, up on them tighter not giving the big cushions that they had in the first half Andy Crossland last time did not get away a very good kick he is kicking into the wind here in the third quarter so the Bruins have got to return on this time but it's a wobbly kick off the side of his foot Let it go, man. not going to be a return and it is touched dead just inside the 40 yard line and UCLA has already scored once, and they have the ball back in good field position at the 39. McNown going to go long, and he's got wide open Polly Dixon, and he will catch it for the touchdown. We haven't played four minutes, and UCLA has got two touchdowns on the board. Well, Bob Toledo said about Cade McNown, he has leadership qualities that bails us out of jams. And you talk about bailing this UCLA team out of here. With this throw, he stepped up in the pocket, made the fake. Good, has good blocking, but watch the presence of Cade McNown. He steps up inside, just rears back and throws that football, takes that hit, and Brian Pola Dixon with the touchdown catch. Nick Ward coming into the picture, but not enough because, again, these receivers for UCLA are very big. Pola Dixon at 6'5", and Danny Farmer at 6'4", and... We have 11.23 to play in the third quarter in our new score, the Bruins 31 and Miami 21. UCLA now back up in the ball game, and it's a 10-point margin. And how did the guys in Tucson react? <laughs> and everybody's feeling a little bit looser now yeah. in Tucson. There's the pass to Polly Dixon and uh, for the touchdown pass, and they just keep getting more people out there in Tucson. Well, the, co the coach has said that uh, Polly Dixon is going to remind you a lot of J.J. Stokes. Well, and he does. And he does. Long strides. 6'5", 210. Mm -hmm. 
This kick again is going to be out of the back of the end zone. Or right. I am Benejo, still not in his pads. He's not going to play anymore today. Injured back in the first quarter. Edgerman James breaks a tackle, breaks another, and is still coming up the sideline. And you see why he is not flashy, but boy, he is an awfully good running back. Ron, when you watch this play, oh, no one wraps up Edgerman James. I mean, they're bouncing off him like. Uh, pinball machine nobody wraps him up and takes him to the ground and when you got a back like him uh, you better wrap him up and take him all the way down line to make is the 38 and a half of UCLA here comes the blitz they pick it up pass right over the middle got him there and it's Andre King Marquise Anderson made the tackle at the 20 yard line but it's good for 31 same thing again, Ron. Marquise Anderson pressing Andre King, but he lets him inside now. Now you can't let a receiver inside on that play. He's clearly beat Scott Covington with a good throw in Miami in business. Tried to strip him. Andre is a sophomore from right up the road in Fort Lauderdale. Always one to press the receiver, force him outside. Edgerman James. Let's see big number 96, Anthony Fletcher, jump up and grab him. Anthony is a freshman from San Dimas, California. San Dimas, huh? Where's that at? Do you know? I have no idea. Ron, Larry Atkins talking to him the other day on the phone, the safety for UCLA's defense. He talked about the coaches telling them and selling them on the fact that everyone in America that's watching college football is going to get to see all three of our teams, the undefeated teams, play, and they're going to judge for themselves. And that's why we got to give a great effort in this football game. Covington scrambling for his life now, gets inside one tackler and takes it down the sideline. Tony White, he just ran right by him. Ran by his outstretched arm. You talk about a smart play here. Ryan Neese, number 47, read that screen right off the bat. Now, you're going to see the screen to Edron James. Now, Ryan Neese runs, hooks up with him and runs right with him. So there's no screen receiver to get the ball to. So Scott Covington does the only other thing he can do, run the football. There's a good job by Damon Neely. He didn't get an entire block, but he came back to help his quarterback. Big 300-pounder. Ninth play of the drive coming up here. Third down. They need to take it to the 10. Here comes the blitz. They picked it up, and the pass thrown behind Daryl Jones. Ron, he's open early. I mean, Scott Covington has Daryl Jones sitting wide open. Just can't get him the football. Didn't see him. What that is is it's a cluster set. Uh, where you bring all three receivers close by. And you're going to see number one sitting right here, wide open, just can't get the ball to Daryl Jones. 32-yard field goal attempt by Andy Crossland. 7 of 10 on field goals, his longest 41 this year. Ball is down, and the left footer pulls this one. That is wide to the right. You only get so many chances to upset UCLA, and the chances for Miami are slipping away because well, their offense is too good. Timeout on the field, 420 left in the third quarter. Still a 10-point Bruin lead. 10-point margin in the Miami Hurricanes miss an opportunity. 32-yard field goal uh, certainly within the reach of uh, Andy Crossland, but he just yanked it. It uh, left footer pushed it right. So the Bruins could really put a nail in the situation here if they were to come up with another one of those long distance strikes. As you watch Farmer in motion, but they'll go with the running play. And it's Jermaine Lewis, who was back in the lineup, and Michael Smith will make the stop on him. Rushes. He's stopped by Michael Smith. 
I think Bob Toledo would be very, very pleased right here with about 12 plays, maybe even more, and about six or seven minutes on a drive. Now you and I were talking about last night he was being interviewed, and uh, the questions were how many points you have to win by, and sometimes that can add fire to the opponent, too, but he wasn't asking the questions. He was just trying to answer them. Jermaine Lewis, Michael Smith again making the tackle. Deshaun Foster comes back into the lineup for UCLA. Second down at 14. But now the throwback screen to Foster, and if they get one block out there, which they did not get, and it's Leonard Myers who played off the blocker beautifully. If they get him out of the way, there was a lot of, of area to run. Yeah, Brian Pollock just didn't get to the uh, defensive back. He fell down, and that was the block you are talking about. If number 60, Brian Pollock, gets the block, now you're off to the races. But watch him. He's just he'll, he's going to lose his balance and fall down it's right here. Leonard starts backtracking. Yeah. See, he played it very wisely. Leonard then, said, "I can see that 325-pound pound guy coming." Third down to ten. They got to take it to the 49 of Miami. Breathing motion. Going to go long. Got Farmer wide open, and on this side, he's got Mellsley wide open for the UCLA touchdown. He had two six-pointers. He could make his choice. That's amazing. Ron, when you come back and watch this play on the replay, Mike Grieb again. Tight end came in motion and sealed the corner so Cade McNown could get outside. Block, made his block, and then came off and, and shielded Cade McNown again. So Mike Grieb with another big play. Watch him come in motion here. There's his block right here. Now watch. He gets a block. Now he comes off, and he gets set for a second block to look give Cade McNown. See, Farmer breaks open, but he's going the other way. And look how wide open Melsby was. He had his choice of six pointers. Without a doubt. Saylor with the extra point. He's got it. And with 128 left in the third quarter, the Miami Hurricanes are looking at a different UCLA football team than they saw back in the first half. 38 to 21. Davenport and Jones are back deep. Grebe, three catches for 95 for him and a touchdown. And Ron, you have to mention Chris Saylor, too, because every kickoff after the score, Miami starts on the 20-yard line. Mm -hmm. First half drives, four, 305 yards, three touchdowns. Second half, four drives, 88 yards for the Hurricanes. That's Fulcher in motion. James right up the middle, breaking tackles as he goes along the way. Jason Stevens from his strong safety spot and Larry Atkins combining. Ron, when you grade a quarterback, everybody wants to know who's the best quarterback in the country is right here, Cade McNown, because how do you grade a quarterback other than winning? He's on a 20-game win streak. He bails UCLA out of jams. He makes nice short throws. Uh, he's a great play-action quarterback. A ball handler and, and a deep thrower in a house that many good quarterbacks have played in. Yeah, that's for sure. James breaks a couple of tackles, breaks another one, and he's free. He'll pick up the first down and add another 12 yards. And the defensive coaches for UCLA are coming off the sideline and really screaming at their plate. Well, Marquise Anderson just beat the turf down. He just kept slamming his fist in the turf after Edron James ran through his See tackle. Yeah. Lock up. Wrap up. Wrap up. That's all you have to do. It's easier said than uh, done, though. First half, he had tremendous success, 173 yards. It's not bad here. No, in the UCLA slowed him down a little bit. They don't have the mix that they had in the first half. I don't feel their offense in tune in, in, in the second half like they were in the first half. Miami. James right up the middle. Has five, has ten, and he's off. 
at the 30, at the 25, and Jason Bell finally saved a touchdown at the 23. The UCLA's seeing a great effort by Edron James. They've seen a lot of great tailbacks this year in their season, but I don't know if they faced one like Edron James. What Edron is doing this afternoon is not only gaining respect on the West Coast because people haven't seen him as he comes out of the game to a standing ovation. This young man's going to be on a lot of preseason All-American teams, Mike. Without a doubt. And, Ron, he is just, uh, really, when you start talking about his attributes, you've got to mention many. This is Davenport. Tries to turn the corner, and he will. Running down the sideline, Davenport. Touchdown, Miami. They finally say, look at <laughs> Again, missed tackles. We're going to look at it. Davenport down the sidelines. Hmm. I don't know. Did he reach no. down and touch the cone? Or? Anyway, it is signaled a touchdown as Crossland with the extra point. And we have 18 seconds left in the third quarter. yards four plays a minute and 10 seconds and the touchdown run by Davenport again. Najee Davenport number four is going to come outside but you're going to see UCLA getting some shots at him again. Nick Williams with a nice block number 36. Good effort getting in the end zone. Larry Atkins trying to make the hit that stops him. Oh his foot hit the cone. His foot hit the cone. So I mean just the edge of it which means he hit the corner. Danny Farmer getting some rest on the sideline because he knows he's about to go right back to war. And again it's a short pooch kick. Soon as the ball is caught good the heavens Fletcher the freshman tight end Mike Rump Mike Rump the backup cornerback just is all over him. Wow. And Bill Miller said now Mike Rump is going to be a great defensive back for Miami. Brian Fletcher uh, will attest to that his hitting ability. 11 seconds left third quarter. Keith Brown. Edward Reed grabbed a hold of him and then Michael Smith will close the door and that is the end of the third quarter. So there's a timeout. We will take it with them as we head to the final 15. It's UCLA by 10. The Bruins 38 and the Hurricanes 28. back as we head to the final 15 minutes 38 to 28 and Mike we've talked about the offensive displays of both teams these could uh, the coaches would be very pleased for end of game staff without a doubt both of them teetering on 500 and they'll get over that but a good mix by both these teams offenses we could wind up with 600 for both 600 plus but UCLA with 21 points in that third quarter Cade McNown on first down Polly Dixon at the 40 breaks off a tackle and loses the football recovered by Miami. Al Blades makes the recovery. Something that this football team does not do very often. No, they've given up four fumbles. They've lost their fifth one. Brian Polly Dixon. A wide receiver trying to get extra yards costs it up. The thing is he withstood the biggest hit and then had it knocked away. Yeah, he, he withstood the hit of Edward Reed number 20. You see him wide open across the middle. Here comes the hit by number 20 Ed Reed. And then he just has the ball tipped out of his hands. So Miami will scrimmage from deep in their own territory but they don't care because they've got the football back and they kept the Bruins out of the end zone. Hurricanes very tight on the offensive line splits. Davenport loses the football. Got 
back on it himself. Very, very fortunate there. Edron James worked walking back up the sideline trying to get back in this ball game. Najee Davenport, who's had a pretty good football game, tries to make the cut back, and the ball just comes out. Anthony Fletcher, number 96, had a chance yeah. at it. Davenport, big opening right up the middle, and he will take it close to the 30. Going to be third down. They'll need to achieve the 34 to keep it going. Robert Hall tripped him up. And coming back into the game, the reason for the big applause is for Edwin James. He's averaging about it. Eight yards a carry, so you're happy when he gets back on the football field. Billy Piper breathing hard there. 36 carries, 288 yards for Edgman James. Play action, going to go long. He's got a man open. Santana Moss, and he'll take it the distance. Touchdown, Miami. Fake by Scott Covington and the Santana Moss got Ryan Rock on his hip on the corner route and then avoids the shoestring tackle for the touchdown. Crossland tries to make it a three point UCLA lead and the kick is good and the Miami Hurricanes will not go away with 1234 left to play in our ball game. So let's take a timeout. UCLA 38, Miami 35. 38 35 at UCLA, and as you can see, just an absolute world of time left in this football game. Ron, what makes this play is Edron James came into the football game. Everybody thought he'd carry the football. Line does a nice job of showing run. And then all of a sudden, Scott Covington with a good fake hits Santana Moss on a corner route in front of Ryan Rock. And uh, this place is rocking. <laughs> all those people that had headed toward the parking lot came back. Rock at the one yard line. Now everybody is rocking. What a hit on the special teams by Marquise Fitzgerald. Deshaun Foster, the lone setback. That's Greeb in motion. They run behind him, and Foster hit at the line of scrimmage. He's going to be knocked down for no gain. Dan Morgan is there to quiet him. Adrian Karsten, what do you have for us? Ron, just a reminder, before we kick the ball off to start this game, I mentioned that this was really a gut check for the Hurricane defense. Remember, coming off their worst loss since 1940, the first couple series were going to make a difference. They did make a difference. All 11 men on the field, you know, it's not 10 years ago, and they're not playing for the national title, but they had to come in here and establish a new reputation after that horrible loss. I'd say they passed the gut check test, Ron. <laughs> they had made a statement, Adrian. You're right. Pass got it complete deep over the middle and that's Mike Reed the tight end and he is over midfield to the 49 Al Blades and Morgan combined on the stop two things Ron Cade McNow with an excellent ball fake Mike Grieve just continues to impress uh, this crowd with his play he blocks he's unselfish he works down the football field Cade McNow knows he's got to deliver this football fast because Shevin Marshall right in his face Mike Grieve makes the catch good job by Oscar Cabrera number 59 the sophomore out of Los Angeles you can see him pulling with the pickup block nothing here as Duro Price who was a tailback and they've moved him to uh, to fullback gets the carry but uh, not going to move the sticks very much on that one. Well Cade McNown's got the benefit he's got as you mentioned 
great wide receivers. His running backs catch the ball very well on screens. His tight ends are active. And you look at the distribution here. Uh, he's spreading the ball all over the football field. I thought the hurricane came through in September. <laughs> everything just blew out of the booth. Where did that come from? <laughs> and now, six. Drills it. Has it complete? Farmer again. And now here's a flag. Well, it's a late flag, too. But nice job by number 87, Danny Farmer. It's probably going to be a hold on uh, Miami. He gave a double move here. Unless they're going to get him for pushing off. No, it's holding no. against Miami, as you suggested. Boy, nice job. Just a, a nice route by Danny Farmer. You're going to see him working against Leonard Myers, who is hurt. Works. Tries to work up the football field, being held. Breaks on the out. And his size is a problem oh, for Leonard it, Myers. No question. That's what I meant with he. Polly Dixon is 6'5. He's 6'4. They don't really have any small receivers, which is difficult for teams that play defensive backs that are 5'10, 5 5'9, 5 and in that vicinity. More and more teams, and I don't know where they're coming from, but maybe the basketball court, but more receivers over 6'3, 6'4 than any How about time. the volleyball team? And the volleyball team, too. <laughs> Pitches to Foster. Deshaun waits for the block, then puts a head down, still spinning. And let's go inside the 20, and now down to the 15. Edward Reed makes the stop on him. I think Foster looks more as though the cobwebs are gone now because he didn't run in the second quarter after he got his, his head bopped. And here's a quick snap. And the ball goes back to Deshaun Foster. They tried the quick play back in the first half. And he is still on his feet inside the 10 yard line. And that is enough for the UCLA first down. That's a heads up play by Cade McNown. You set that up and you watch the defensive team get out of the huddle and they get out slow and they're dragging a little bit. And all of a sudden you hit them with this quick uh, play and you try to get around the corners what you try to do. You try to outnumber them on the outside. And Deshaun Foster just picks up good yardage for the first down. Well, it's a huge well, day. There's no question about that. And, uh, you know, 24 hours from now, there'll be two teams headed for Tempe. And obviously, we don't know who they are yet. 13th play of the drive. UCLA Foster to the right side. Breaks off one tackle. Dives for the end zone, and he won't get in. Is Edward Reed is the man down on bottom making the tackle on him. You like that effort, O'Ron. He tried to get that football across the, the in line there. Deshaun Foster showing a lot of awareness as a freshman running back. Gets on the uh, hip of the offensive lineman, Andy Myers, and reaches out. And there's a timeout called with seven minutes left in the ball game. So we've got a commercial coming. UCLA by three. We'll be back after this. UCLA by three, and they are back at the line of scrimmage. They're trying to shove this one in to make it a 10 point margin again. It's third down, and you see how close that football is. The left defensive end looks as though he is lined up outside, doesn't he? McNown. Fakes the run, going to try to carry it into the end zone, and he will. Total yardage for both of these teams, almost two-thirds of a mile in this one. Excellent call here, Rhonda. Cade McNown, a lot of confidence in your senior quarterback. Good fake to Deshaun Foster, and Foster really sold it because he went over the top without the football. Edward Reed trying to chase Cade McMahon, but he shows you the speed that he has. Foster over the top. Sailor with the extra point attempt. He's got it. And with 6.54 to play in the ballgame, our new score is UCLA 45 and Miami 35. Do the Hurricanes have another answer? We'll find out when we come back. All righty. Great day just to let college football take you on into the night. And we've had a good start here. And it looks as though they're having a good one there in the Big 12 championship. Just sit back in the rocker. Uh -huh. Our straight chair for bad back people. I mean, hey. Davenport, one of the deep men, is looking. Uh, Chris Saylor stands by to kick it off. This time into the wind. On 
the run at the 17 yard line. And out of the 30 is Daryl Jones. Here they come. They set to reverse. Santana Moss, and he picks up a block. And now steps out of bounds after he got everything he could up at the 40. You have to block by 77. Robert Hall gives you a lookout block right here. What you do is you see how look out before you hit him. Uh, what Robert Hall does is blocks inside and then peels back outside. You're going to watch him peel back out. Now here's the lookout block right there. A nice job on Aziz. Well designed reverse by Larry Coker, the offensive coordinator. Culture in motion. They roll the pocket that way. They lead their tight ends into block and downfield on the pass. It hit the defensive back, Marquise Anderson, in the back. A flag comes down at the 20. Andre King was the defending or the intended receiver. Marquise Anderson had a tough time in the first half. Andre King gets behind him. He almost caught that thing behind his back. <laughs> Look at this. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Talk about concentration. Yeah. And Marquise is still trying to figure out what's yeah. going on. Assess the previous spot. Automatic first down. So the automatic first down and the penalty takes it just inside the 45 yard line. Six minutes, 32 seconds to play. 10 point UCLA lead and the Hurricanes inside the Bruin 50 again. James cutting, twisting, turning inside the 30 yard line and Santi Hall makes the stop 14 yards in the carry he's got to be getting close to 300 yards just again good moves in the hole he's always trying to cut on the move excellent vision trying to find uh, his blockers and getting in the secondary just gets a nice hole right there nice block by Nick Williams Damon Neely Fulcher wide open. They throw it to him, and Fulcher will score. He's been a blocker all day long, and this time they moved him in motion and spin him out into the pattern. it interesting Ron both tight ends were really open Fulcher and Frank sh a little shorter on the route but a nice call by Butch Davis and his offensive staff to get Miami right back in this game extra point at Camp Crossland is good 608 to play Bob Toledo probably saying I couldn't live down here the clocks move too slowly We'll be right back. 6.08 to play. Three point game. UCLA leading. They were up by 10 just a moment ago. I was about to make the comment that Fulcher has been very patient today. He's been a blocker all day long. And boy, they, they decoyed with him. And like you said, both tight ends wound up being open. Look at this. Both teams over 600 yards on the ball game. Another great ball game down here that uh, ended up 47 45. Remember that one? Rock going to be tackled as he crossed the 25. That was the Doug Booty game. BC and Miami. Good job right here by fake by Scott Covington. Finds Fulcher and uh, wide open. Everything went with the run. Again, the presence of Edron James has such an effect on UCLA's defense. See if he's got something in that magic wand that can push it back to a 10 point margin. 22 of 28 for 453 for McNown. And they'll keep it on the ground. Jermaine Lewis is going to be stopped shy of the 30 by Michael Smith. McNown going long, and guess who? It's Farmer. 
And it is taken away and almost intercepted by Leonard Meyer. Under through the ball. Cave McNown couldn't get under it. Couldn't get enough under his uh, feet to throw this football deep enough. Danny Farmer had a shot at it, but Leonard Myers took it away. Caused the incompletion. See, he just does He throws across his body because the pressure of Dan Morgan. Look at that adjustment by Danny Farmer. Trying to adjust, trying to jump ball here with Leonard Myers. Myers tipped the ball. Watch here at the last second. We'll tip it. And then it hit him in the stomach, and then he took it away from him. Third down, and they need to take it across midfield to the 48. McNown got him over the middle at the 35-yard line, and still on his feet is Brad Melsby. The ball came loose with the play dead. First down, Miami. Two turnovers, UCLA. And Bob Toledo is all the way out on the field at the 40. Exactly the thoughts that's going through Bob Toledo's mind is he's traveled a long way for this ball game. And he has Big East officials. Let's watch the play. Ball is still in. It is still in. And the ball, well, we'll have to go back and slow it down to see if his knee was on the ground or not. The officials say it was not. James takes it right up the middle. Has five, has ten. He has 15 and now 17 yards. Davenport, I beg your pardon, not James. And a gain of 17. And the way the running backs are carrying the football, you don't really need to throw it. No, and uh, they've got enough time with 316 left to go on the clock. Let's see the play again. His knee's down. And then the ball came out. Yep. His right knee was on. Should have been UCLA ball. Well, they've got a couple of the defensive stand now. Edger and James back in the ball game. Bolter in motion. Now they roll the pocket. Oh, he's got Jones wide open, and he throws over on the sideline and connects with King. Santana Moss also had curled down at the 40, and he was loose. Scott Covington, Ron, we talked about having a quiet third quarter, but he's come on here in the fourth quarter. He threw a dart to Andre King. Don't you agree with that? His knee was down. Clock shows two minutes and 52 seconds to play. James, no place to go to the right. Tries to right his situation, and he's going to wind up losing yardage back to the 45. And Aziz made the play, Ron. Now, the difference here, Mike, because of the retreat, it's going to wind up being third down and about seven yards to go where they had a second down and two. Yeah, what Edron James was trying to do is cut back, and they move him, made him move laterally across the line of scrimmage. A mistake by Edron James, the only one he's made today. UCLA's defense known for getting turnovers. They have not been able to today. 210, now 209 to play. Covington with a third down, rolls the pocket, got a man open, and has it complete at the 36 yard line to Andre King. Too much of a cushion by Ryan Rock, number 33. Everything at stake in this last two minutes for the UCLA Bruins. Who's going to the Rose Bowl? Is it going to be these guys right here from Arizona? What if UCLA makes it into the BCS championship game at Tempe? That is the case. But if UCLA loses here, different scenario. Davenport in the game at tailback. Pass thrown, got it complete at the 25, and that is tight end David Franks. We talked.
talked about in the first half. They're a very tight and oriented team, and not until the second half have they really utilized them. No, Larry Atkins ran with a nice tackle. He was right there, just didn't make the play. Glue that keeps the defense together. 47, now the clock the game, and what was that becomes the enemy of UCLA. They still have two timeouts left, Ron. Davenport the tailback again. Clock runs at 136, now 135. The give goes to Davenport, cuts it to the left, has five, has ten, and it's going to be down at the, they call it the 15-yard line, so actually it's a nine-yard carry, not quite ten, as Tony White made the tackle, but the thing that Butch Davis is looking at, he wants to score, but he wants no time left on that clock. No, he want to see Cade McNown again. And UCLA still has the two timeouts, but they're in such a predicament because you rip off nine yards on first down. Second and short. Covington to throw on second down. Got it out in the flat. This is the fullback. Williams and out of bounds just before the goal line. UCLA might have been better off if he scored. Well, now they've got to use their timeouts now. They've got to save some time on the clock for Cade McNown. Nick Williams out of the backfield. Linebacker trying to get to him. Doesn't make the play. Looked like he was in the end zone. Tony White will make the tackle, and they say his foot stepped on the line at the one. First and goal. Miami. James, left side, touchdown Miami. Some long looks right now. And on the UCLA sideline, some long looks as Crossland tries to make it. And does a four-point Miami lead. Ron, best thing that happened to UCLA is they scored quick. So they still got 50 seconds and two timeouts for Cade McNown to work with. Fifty seconds left for this man. He has pulled magic many times before, and he's going to be called on on this Saturday afternoon in the Orange Bowl in Miami to do it again if his club has a chance to go to 10 feet. What an effort by this Miami football team coming off that shellacking by Syracuse. No question. Kick is taken at the 22-yard line. Caldwell out of the 40, still going. And now to the 45-yard line. 42 seconds left. Two timeouts for UCLA. Al Borges, the offensive coordinator. A lot of time for Cade McNown. Look at these drives. One under one minute. One under three minutes. And are three under three minutes and two under three minutes or three minutes plus pressure on McNabb gets it out in the flat Deshaun Foster going to be hit stays in the field to play needs to get out of bounds and he does stopping the clock and he goes out at the 43 and there's 31 seconds on the clock Ron this is why the, the college rule stopping the clock first downs is going to help Cade McNown in this drive still has 31 seconds to go and you, you almost think Ron eventually Danny Farmer is going to be the guy to get loose in the secondary if they're going to win this football game I am today Joe hands on his knees across the way injured back in the first quarter McNown 25 of 32 507 yards and five touchdowns drills it again and it's a hook and ladder as they lateral it back to Foster Melsby to Foster but Miami had closed it so close to the sideline he had no place to go with it 
Donna stops the clock because they threw the ball into the sideline. Melsby's going to make the catch. Contact with Marquise Fitzgerald. Now he pitches the ball. Very fortunate that Foster caught that with one hand and got out of bounds. Still a lot of time for UCLA. 24 seconds left in our ball game. First and 10. But the most important thing, 19 seconds showing on the clock. Miami leads it by four. McNown under pressure. Now he's going to run out of it. And he's going to have to run the football and get out of bounds, and that cost them eight more seconds. Only 11 left in the ball game. And give hats off to the secondary of Miami and also the push from the defensive line. Playing very deep, Ron. They're, they're going to give McNown the throw underneath, but they're not going to give him anything deep here. Just couldn't find anybody open. Second down at seven. Now the Rose Bowl is on the line for them. 11 seconds will tell the story. McNown under pressure. Hit as he throws and almost intercepted by Dan Morgan. Oh my goodness. There are four seconds left in the ball game. And it was Burrow, Michael Burrow, the junior from North Miami Beach with the pressure. Ron, it's going to come down to one Hail Mary for Cade McNown to throw the ball in the end zone. Good pressure by Derek Cam. Mike Burrow, number 93, putting pressure on Cade McNown. Now you talk about jump balls. Danny Farmer's played a lot of volleyball, but he may have to go up for this one. All right, let's see. Four seconds left of the ball game. Miami by four. This is it. McNown for the end zone. He's got a man there, and it is overthrown. Drew Bennett, the backup quarterback, the intended receiver, and the win streak by the UCLA Bruins has been halted. of the field and Adrian Carson. Well, Coach, you may not have been playing for the national championship, but I think you just decided the game. Congratulations. Oh, Adrian, thank you. Great courage by this group of kids for 10 months. I've never been so proud of a group of guys the way they fought through adversity all year long. This game, what a great job our guys did today. I'm proud of every one of them. Down by 10, down by 3, down by 10, down by 3, up Didn't by matter. 4. You we learned a lot about their quit. Goal. We came to win the game. We weren't going to quit today. Ron, you talk about great effort out of this Miami football team, and uh, Butch Davis's coaching staff rallied a team that got drilled in Syracuse and brought them back here, and they won a big, big football game here today. So, total yards of the game, UCLA 670, and Miami 689. So our final score, Miami shocks UCLA 49 to 45. For Mike Godfrey to Adrian Carson and our entire ESPN crew, I'm Ron Franklin. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. The Miami Hurricanes have pulled off the upset. UCLA now goes to the Rose Bowl.